Hey guys, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, and today we're going to take a look at the mountain lion from the Pathfinder Knife Shop. Let's take a look at some of the specs. Okay, so we're talking about a pretty hefty knife here. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch 1095 high carbon steel. It is 10 and a quarter inches in overall length. The cutting edge is 5 and 3 eighths of an inch. It has a 90 degree spine, Scandinavian ground, walnut scales. This one is a little bit fuller than the one that's on my Scorpion. I don't know if they used a little bit thicker wood or if they just used less in the sanding process, but it fills the hand very nice. It weighs in at 9.1 ounces and is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch wide. So this is a pretty good uh, size knife. Feels very well balanced in the hand and I love the blade profile. Let's see what she can do. So one of the first things that I like to check for because it's so prevalent in my area is that 90 degree spine. How well does it trim up my fat wood for a tender? very prevalent in the eastern woodlands and it's one of my go-to's but I also use that 90 degree spine for a lot of other things so it's important to me that a knife be able to pull off all of these well the technical term what we like to call it is little fuzzy and once we have that we also need it to be able to strike this ferro rod and get some fire going so there you go Throws a good spark, got our fat wood going. She'll rip those sparks off of there if you give her a chance. Good sharp 90 degree spine, very important. Boy, that's some fine, fine carbon right there. Yeah, I'm using the whole blade right on down to the tip. I'm not trying to conserve anything. I'm not, I'm not out in the bush anywhere. I'm here at home. And I'm trying to test the entire knife to see how it works. So I'm getting right down here on the tip and everywhere else and seeing how it feels. Working with what I have. Just to find out how the different parts of the blade perform in the wood, how deep I can cut in, how much I can come back and hog off if I really want to. Just putting it through a little bit of a test. You can go tender, but she'll bite if, you, if she wants to. All right, so another thing that we would be looking for in this knife is if the heat treat is right in that 1095, we should be able to use our knife as our steel for flint and steel fire. So let's get us a rock out of here. Fold over some char cloth. Gotta be careful doing this. Let's see if we can get some sparks. Oh, I'm getting sparks. There we go. And that's what we want. So we've got a great heat treat there. So our next test is how well will it baton? Now, I like carrying an axe. I believe when it comes to chopping, it's hard to beat an axe, but you might have a situation where you really need to get to the inside of this piece of wood, or maybe you need to make a bow drill set. All right, checked out there just a little bit. It's no problem. Come back on this side. All right. Let 
looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and come in here and take a little bit of a bigger slice. Get something about as thick as we would want for our fireboard. Get ourselves a little score mark there. We know we're going to trim it down a little bit if we were making that. Let me stand up here. The bottom's cut at a little bit of an angle, but that's all right. That's real life. You will find perfectly cut edges out there in the bush <laughs> move that camera a little bit let's see here i think she works just fine now let's go back to our fat wood here for a minute because you know we know we can hog off a big piece of wood and split wood i mean we basically have a wedge here i mean look at the angle on that scandinavian grind i mean no rolling no nothing dead itch feels great but the true test in that scandinavian is how fine can you make those little small feathers we've already demonstrated that we can use the back in the 90 degree spine but then the next process is to make feathers that are very small and a lot of the 90 the um 90 degree spines will scrape up your little fuzzies. But the problem with some of your Scandinavian grinds is the grind is so steep that when it starts to bite into the wood, it really wants to hog in. And it takes a lot of practice to control that and get some small fine pieces going. I'm gonna tell you what, that's pretty fine right there. That's exactly what you're looking for when you want that Scandinavian grind to get those small curls like that. And what they've done, if I compare this knife to my PLS K1, which a lot of you are familiar with, the Pathfinder Logo Series 1 knife, it looks like they've raised this Scandinavian grind up a little bit. So even though we're talking about the same thickness of metal, with that grind coming up a little bit, it causes it not to bite or hog in quite as much. Gives you a little bit better of a slicing ability, even in the thick spine knife. You know what? Talking about slicing, we need to do a slice test next. Let's try something else. All right, so I've been using this knife for about a month, and I'm really impressed with the way it feels, the way it carves, the way it works. But you know what? Any one tool option, or if you don't like that term, any knife that you carry out in the woods, it's gonna be the one that you strap to your side. You need to be able to support your fire making, your shelter making, but you also, need to be able to put some fine slices on your bacon. That's gonna help things a whole lot. A little bit of that grease on there is gonna help take care of it too. Now the only thing that I've done to help protect this 1095, and like I said, it's been my everyday carry now for about a month, is when I cut my bacon or when I'm done with it at the end of the day, I either rub a little bit of fixing wax on it if it's going to be a couple days before I use it and it's raining, or I just put a little bit of olive oil on it 
and that has kept this blade in a uh, very nice condition. I know that all of the product that's on it that I've treated it with is food gray, so I don't have to worry about cutting my, my hog jaw here and turning around and frying that up. Remember to pull that away from you when you wipe those blades off. Always pulling that knife edge away from you. And here's your test. Set our bacon in our pan over here. You can baton it. I've carved with it. I've made two fire sets with this knife. I've used it each day. No issues at all. All right, Pathfinder Knife Shop. I gotta tell you, the Mountain Lion is a beast of a knife. It's a nice big knife. Very good for your treks out in the wilderness. For those of you that are looking for a one tool option, this might just be the knife for you. Go online and check it out yourself. Now, as far as the sheath options go, Pathfinder Knife Shop sells their, their knives without a sheath. That gives you the option of picking the type of sheath that you want. They sell several. They have leather. That's what I went with. It's just a good quality, thick, traditional leather sheath. It's got a nice welt. It's finished off nicely. Good size belt loop. It's traditional. It's what I like. I like treating the leather on the inside. I think it helps take care of my knives a little bit. But they also have Kydex options and Kydex over leather, the hybrid styles. Or you can go out and you can make your own sheath or have your local leather maker hook you up with whatever sheath that you like in your particular style. But uh, I must say, once again, I'm impressed by the Pathfinder Knife Shop. The quality of knife that they're putting out for the price that they're putting it out, I think it's hard to beat. Thanks for joining me once again. I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. Until next time, God bless.